Hey everybody, today we're going to be talking a little bit more about signing packages and the importance of notarizing those packages. Notarization is the process by which you are getting that package or code not just signed but verified and validated by Apple where, where we actually are getting that sort of like proof of authenticity that guarantees that gatekeeper will automatically allow and not prompt you for any kind of warning that the application or installer or code that you're getting notarized is malicious or suspicious in any way because it's been validated by Apple. All right, so let's deep dive the process. So whenever I need to do some notarization, I always go back to the same online tutorial. I'm just going to go ahead and pull it up here and I'll go ahead and I'll add it into the show notes. But this great article by David, apologies if I got your name wrong, but this article written back in 2019, still very valid, talks about notarizing installers for Mac OS Catalina and talks about the importance of doing so. Before we get started though with this tutorial, and I'm just going to follow along with what David wrote, we're going to need a installer and we're going to need an installer that is not signed so it can go through the whole process. All right, so I am going to be going back to packages and I have my package that I used in my last tutorial and you can see here that it is already set up for signature when I built. It means that um, the certificate that I use as a developer um, is already set to sign this package. Now there's two ways to sign. Obviously I can continue right in the line of the tutorial that David wrote where uh, I'm skipping his manual steps for signing but I do want to show you that you can sign a package directly using terminal and show you what that looks like. So it's totally okay to use a tool like this um, or a tool like script a package which we'll talk about in a moment um, to sign the packages and even do the or take on the entire notarization process for you but I found that it's also good to know exactly how to do it on your own and how to understand what's happening behind the scenes so what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this certificate and I'm going to build the package without signing it and it's going to give me an unsigned package once it finishes building here all right so we are done building so now I can go ahead and quit packages I'm just gonna go ahead and locate the most recent version of this package so it's in my users folder and we have it here. So this is the package. I'm just gonna move it to the desktop just so it's easier to work with. And we are going to open up Terminal and follow along with what, with what the tutorial tells us to do. All right, so the first thing we need to do is we need a subscription to the app developer program, which we do have, Xcode, which we do have, and an app-specific password for your Apple ID. This is important. You're going to have to transmit your app password, your Apple ID app password in the terminal command. So you need to to have set an app password. If you're not familiar with how to create an app password, there's a tutorial here that in that David links out to that is great. And again, I'll put all this information in the uh, description of the video. All right, notarization. First step is to sign the uh, package and then to have it notarized by Apple. What he's saying here is we need to log in and create our developer ID installer certificate. And he walks through the process of doing so in the web interface. I much prefer doing this inside of Xcode. So I'm just gonna go ahead and walk you through that process here in Xcode. So if you open up Xcode and you log into setting or you go into settings, if you've already added your Apple ID, if you haven't, click on the plus button and add the Apple ID with your username and password. And once you have done that, it gives you the ability to manage 
certificates down here. You can see here that it's just loading. So we'll wait a second while this loads. All right, now that it's loaded, we can manage certificates. And it's asking in the tutorial, he's asking us to create a developer ID installer certificate, because that's what we're going to need to sign this installer. And if you don't already have one, you can click on manage certificates and you can choose developer ID installer and it will generate a certificate and it will automatically add that certificate to your keychain. You can see here that I already have those certificates. So I'm going to go ahead and quit Xcode at this point. So now what he writes is in terminal, you can type in this command security find identity V and you can see all the identities that are in your keychain. Another way of doing this is to simply open the keychain and then find the identity of your certificate. So you can do it either way. In that way, you would open up keychain access. We would search for, I'd say Apple and or Apple developer. And it will show the same information, developer ID, installer, free labs, and it's got the same text that we're showing here in terminal. So it's just another way of finding the same information. Okay. Now we're going to sign the installer. So we're going to use the product sign and we're going to use the sign flag. And we're going to put in the developer ID installer information. We're going to navigate to the installer and we're going to output the uh, signed installer. So let's go ahead and do that uh, together. So we're going to do product sign and then we're going to do the sign flag. Oh, we already got that in there. And then we're going to put the name of our developer ID installer inside of quotes. So we want the installer one. So I'm just going to go ahead and grab that here inside of quotes. And then where the installer is. So in this case, it's on my desktop. And the name of the installer on my desktop is simply called Chrome self-contained. So if I type in uppercase C and tab, it will tab over. Now I want to save the signed item to my desktop and I want to call it the same thing, but just with the word signed. So I'm just going to copy the package name. I'm going to arrow over and then type in signed. I'm going to put in my password. Always allow. And you can see here that the signed package was created. All right, so that's how to sign a package manually using terminal. So now what we need to do is send the notarization request. We can, like it says here, we can verify that the, that the package was signed by running this. So let's go ahead and just run this so that we can see what this looks like. We're going to check the signature of the Chrome signed package. And we can see here that it's been signed properly. So now let's send the notarization request. So when you look at this command, let's break it down. So we're running a tool and we're notarizing the app. We're setting the primary bundle ID which is important to know. And with the package that I created, let's go ahead and open it back up. The bundle ID is the identifier of the installer. Okay, so that's what we're gonna be pulling from in this command. And then we're gonna be putting in our username for Apple ID and then our password. And this password is not your Apple ID password. Again, this is your app password, right? This is a password that bypasses multi-factor authentication on your account. And then the file of the signed package. Okay. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to copy this. We're going to put in the bundle ID, which I'm going to grab from packages. There it is. With end quotes around it. Let's make sure we got that in there. Okay, great. Username. And then my Apple ID is 
have. And then, oops, we missed a, a line here on the username. So I'll just go back and correct that. Password. And again, this has to be in quotes. And then file. And then the path to where the installer is. Now this has to be the full path. So if you don't know how to get the path, another way of, of figuring that out is to drag and drop the file into terminal and it will actually give you the full path. So that's another little trick for you. So I just opened up a new tab by pressing command T and then I drop that in there and then I am now going to press enter and what this is going to do. All right, so now what we're seeing here is the notarization process is, is happening. It's sending this installer to Apple and it's giving us feedback on our notarization requests. So essentially what this telling us is, hey, this tool has been deprecated for notarization starting in late 2023 will no longer be supported by Apple Notary Service. You should start using Notary Tool to notarize your software. No errors in the upload. And this is our request UUID. So we'll put out another video that shows how to notarize your software utilizing the new Notary Tool, but it did actually work and we did get the request UUID. And we can use that to check on the status of our notarization. All right, so the next step is to check the status of the notarization. So we're gonna go ahead and put in this command. And this command basically walks us through the process of checking the status of the ID. And again, we're gonna need our username and password here. And so let's go ahead and get the ID. And the ID is previously mentioned as this string here. And then we want username and password. And we're putting in the password in this field and pressing enter. All right, so we can see that the status of this request is in progress. So it does take some time for the notarization to complete, but once it's approved, we'll see package approved, and then we'll be able to finalize the notarization process by stapling the notarization ticket to the file. All right, so let's check out on that again. So it's still in progress, so we'll just wait a few minutes. While we're waiting, let's skip over to another app that I find extremely useful. It's called script to package And what script to package does is it allows you to create the same kind of package that we created in the past, but which was a package where we were bundling in a script or deploying a script to a bunch of computers. This is also known as a payload free package. And this program was developed by Rich Troughton. He works over at SAP, and you can find this on the SAP website here, where you can see Scripta Package is part of the is an SAP tool. It's open source and maintained by SAP. And you can see here that we're at version 1.1.1. .1. You'll download this on the releases page and then install it by dragging it into your applications folder. Script the package is really nice because it gives you the ability to sign and notarize your packages. Instead of putting in your username and password in a terminal and running these commands, you're putting in your Apple ID and your password here. And again, this is the app specific password and it stores that temporarily and then uses that to notarize your package all in one shot. So essentially the way that it works is you select your scripts, and then you pick your signed element if you want it to be signed. 
and then and then you're done. It walks you through a little wizard and completes the process. Another great tool for signing and notarizing of packages if it happens to be a flat package, but if you're using packages and you are deploying payloads where you're you have other resources or you're going to be deploying an actual payload that is going into a directory within the user's um, folder structure, then you won't be able to use this tool. This is really only for those uh, payload free packages. So these are packages where you're just deploying a script, you're just setting some preferences, you're doing an action on the computer, etc. So keep that in mind when using this tool. It's a really great tool and a really great resource for those that are using that kind of package but i wanted to really call out the notarization and then the signing features of this application because it can be super helpful to to create the package sign and notarize all in one shot and that this tool is really great at doing that okay so let's go ahead and check on the progress again so again i'm just up arrowing and i'm running the command so we can see here that the package was approved so now we're ready to go to the final step in the tutorial. Stapling the ticket to the file. So we're going to run this stapler staple command. And what this does is it really just validates the, and again, I need to grab this full path. So I'm just going to do that same trick again. All right. So let's go back to the command. That's all we need to do. It's going to validate this file. And we can see here that the staple and validate action worked. So now what we have is we have a signed and notarized package that we can now use uh, to upload to any MDM and deploy with certainty that it's going to be installed correctly and also we have an installer that we can distribute externally of, a, of an MDM and users can double click on it and they can get that um, workflow where they're not being told that this package is from an untrusted source. So we can see here that it's been notarized and that it's been signed and that's it. I really hope you enjoyed this video. It was really fun for me to walk you through the signing and notarization stage using packages, terminal, known and, and well-written established tutorial. And we talked a little bit about the SAP app script to package. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. And thanks for watching. Hey everybody, so if you love this video and you want to see more great content like it, please check out my LinkedIn page, connect with me, follow me over there. Also, please hit that bell button and subscribe to our YouTube channel and leave a comment down below. Thanks for watching.